Now, it should come as no surprise to anyone who watches this channel that we are huge fans of the Kia EV6 and its eGMP stablemates, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Genesis GV60. But what's been missing from that lineup of genuinely good electrified crossovers is a bona fide performance variant until now. This is the Kia EV6 GT, which packages a more powerful two-rotor powertrain underneath its attractive styling, as well as some genuine performance upgrades to help it keep all of that power under control. The GT starts at about $62,000, which does make it the most expensive variant in the EV6 lineup. But does that added cost yield some genuine performance out on the real world? Let's find out. The Kia EV6 GT's exterior is only slightly revised compared to the less powerful GT line. Headlining the changes are an attractive set of 21-inch alloy wheels, as well as acid green accents on the brake calipers, and the rear fascia has been slightly revised compared to its lesser siblings. The EV6 GT also has a unique interior with the same acid green accents appearing on the seats and the dashboard, as well as a unique striated applique on the dash. And then there's this fantastic racing bucket setup up front that looks like it may have been borrowed from the Hyundai Veloster N. It's supportive and stylish and definitely fits the EV6 GT's mission. Now those subtle cosmetic alterations aside, the EV6 GT is kind of a wholesale upgrade over the GT line, for example. It has larger front and rear electric motors for a total of 576 horsepower, and it also has a trim-specific GT driving mode, which uncorks all of that power all the time. It's not like a boost mode like you'd find on the GV60 that expires after 10 seconds. Kia says that they did this so that you have kind of a consistent driving experience when you are in that GT mode, and the net result is some pretty incredible straight line speed. They claim a zero to 60 time of 3.4 seconds. I'd be surprised if it isn't a little bit faster than that. And for context, that number is actually faster than a Porsche Taycan GTS, which costs double the price. So you're definitely getting a hell of a lot of straight line speed from your $62,000 roughly that you're gonna be spending on an EV6 GT. Now it has to be said that while this is a pretty fast car in a straight line, if you enter a corner at a speed that's appropriate for a more typical sporty car, you kind of drift to the outside of the corner just a bit and you have to dial in a little bit more steering lock to bring things under control. It never feels particularly unstable or dangerous, but you do kind of just have to realign your expectations when you're driving this thing. And it is still pretty fun to push through corners. After all, GT does stand for Grand Touring. Quite frankly, that's where this car shines the most. If you're on a long drive that includes a scenic route, the GT is good fun. It's not really well suited to really tight maximum attack canyon or track driving, in spite of that drift mode posturing but it's still a whole lot of fun to drive when you kind of just want to hustle down a road at a brisk pace. It's also pretty decently comfortable with one big exception. These sports seats are very well bolstered and most people in the industry really love them, but I'm actually not a huge fan because I feel like there's not enough shoulder support. There's kind of this like lever that's running right across the middle of my back that doesn't really feel super comfy when I'm in the seat for more than two or three hours. That's kind of a bummer, but it's really the only drawback for an otherwise nicely equipped cabin that's perfect for a 206 mile cruise. Yes, you do pay a fair amount of money for the Kia EV6 GT, but I still think it's a pretty good value, offering some incredible blistering straight line speed and decent cornering performance as well that strikes it right at the heart of the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT and Tesla Model Y performance. You also get a really nice interior with excellent materials that feel very appropriate to this class of car. And it looks really nice as well, depending on your opinion of the styling. I personally think it's very attractive, especially with these little winglets on the rear spoiler. Ultimately, you do have to make a couple of sacrifices with the EV6 GT. First of all, the body control isn't phenomenal when you're really pushing it hard. And then you do have to sacrifice some range, 206 miles for this vehicle versus more than 250 for every other version of the EV6 GT. But if you can live with those drawbacks, the EV6 GT is a really fun to drive electric vehicle that proves that we don't have to give up driving enjoyment in exchange for zero emissions. Thanks for watching.